Tony Lee Glenn here this morning and I'm going to show you how to get to Little Switzerland and Spruce Pine up in Mitchell County from Interstate 40. I'm going west right now on Interstate 40. You see I'm headed to uh, Marion and Shelby exit 86 is just ahead of me here. Um, I'm not going to show you every step of the way on up through here or if I do I'll probably speed it up uh, the video shooting with a GoPro Hero 3 which is hanging from my windshield. I put one of the little mounts up to the top of the uh, of my windshield up near the rear view mirror and the uh, GoPro Hero 3 is now hanging upside down which is pretty cool. Uh, the little camera itself it has a setting where you can make it shoot video upside down. So even though the camera's hanging upside down when I go to edit this video it's going to be right side up. That's a pretty cool little feature. I'm shooting 48 frames per second uh, in 1080p mode with Pro Team turned on. Pro Team is uh, a way to shoot very high dynamic range video, sort of like camera raw for a uh, photo camera. So I'm taking exit 86 off of Interstate 40. Uh, once again, I was going west if you're coming east from Asheville. Uh, from Asheville this way headed east back toward Hickory still take the same exit probably I, I think I would and uh, we're gonna be doing this 226 north highway 226 north and that's what this uh, exit looks like here I'm testing this GoPro just to see you know what kind of uh, field of view I get uh, the, the camera's hanging about the same height as my head so I'm wondering if for purposes of going on like scenic drives or something if you can put a GoPro in your windshield and really get the experience of what it's like to see at least out the front part of your wind uh, you know the view and everything I've, I've actually actually toying with, the, toying with the idea of getting a couple more GoPros one that I could put on the left or right window or at least maybe mount to the uh, I guess to the door panel so that I don't have to like mess it up where I roll the wind up and down. It sticks on real strong adhesive and according to their website I should be able to get this little tiny little uh, mount off my windshield if I need to just by shooting it with a hair dryer and heating the glue up on it. Um, the little mount itself is probably not much bigger than a 50 cent piece or probably between that and a, a dollar coin and um, then the, the GoPro snaps in a little, little housing that comes with it snaps in uh, to that and it's very simple very simple very ergonomic nice design so once again continuing north on 226 I could have turned right just there and it would have taken me right into the town of Marion um, they didn't want to do that it's not a bad drive it's probably actually almost as quick as this bypass because this bypass kind of snakes around. But this is a lot more, you know, less aggravating. No stoplights on this except for maybe a, one place down toward Walmart. So off to the right of me across the, the other side of this little hill, we'll see portions of it in a minute, is the little town of Marion. A very pleasant little town here at, in, the, in the foothills down at the bottom of the mountains. So we're going to climb up pretty high going to Little Switzerland and I'll also show you how to get to Spruce Pine if you're looking for and getting to Spruce Pine and what the best route is. I've lived in Little Switzerland or lived, uh, my parents lived up there, I'm going to visit them. So I lived there probably from the time I was about five and a half till I graduated from college.
there you're seeing some of the water towers from Marion on up in front of us. This is the Henderson, Henderson Street exit here, and there's a place you've got, you've got a good little McDonald's there and some other stuff. The mountains we're seeing up in the in the far distance there are the Black Mountain Range. That's Mount Celo kind of dead straight on. And then a lot of those are just the Black Mountains where Mount Mitchell is. So far over to the left will be Mount Mitchell. We can't see it right now. I, I don't know the I can't name all the different peaks we're seeing. But we're headed in that general direction. Little Switzerland, Switzerland will be off to the right of this. Good little bit. Um, so most of those mountains you're seeing there are over 5,000 feet. Mount Mitchell 6684. Uh, Mount Celo is kind of the high peak on the right up there as you're seeing that. And you can see there's some snow up there. This is I'm shooting this on January 5th, 2000. 70 here but you're going to still go straight you're going to keep on going straight and here's the one i think it's maybe two red lights here but we're kind of really off the bypass at this point though so we're, we're going to continue on 226 north 221 north there's a really good wendy's off to the left here there's a mcdonald's there's lowe's hardware uh, the old walmart used to be over there not anymore but you can see it's kind of a good place to stop and get something to eat that looks like big lots over there now comfort in and all that like i said i mentioned earlier i'm shooting 48 frames per second so i can just get pretty good action this little gopro hero 3 will shoot 1080p which i'm shooting in now at 60 frames per second it looks really good i'm just trying to save a little bit of data space i was just shooting in 48. And 48 makes a big difference in, in shooting in 30 which most people you know historically have shot in 30 frames per second if you're shooting progressive uh, some people shoot in 60 frames per second interlaced very few cameras will even do that though so this one will shoot 60 frames progressive I'm shooting 48 now, and it seems to do really good with the action. You can stop. You should be able to stop just about any frame and not have a whole lot of blur. Now, I'm putting this on YouTube, and YouTube takes everything down to 30 frames per second. So the video you'll be watching is actually 30 frames per second. But because I'm shooting 48 frames per second, the uh, if you do stop a frame, the, the action should look pretty good. The vehicles passing us and stuff still will all look fairly sharp. Uh, at least I have a, I've done some handheld video as I'm driving down the road. This seems to work pretty good. Maybe I should have tried 60, but we'll see how it looks at 48. That extra 18 frames a second really does do a good job when you're shooting action stuff or, or you know booking it down a road. This uh, stretch of road we're going on here is between Marion and a place called Woodlawn. And uh, what we 
call the foot of the mountain down here when you start to ascend up to Little Swiss. You're going to see a lot of rock, uh, places that sell rock here. That's kind of big business. It's building stones. Stones actually that you use to face your buildings. Like say you want to put rock uh, on the side of your house or at least over your basement or you want to put rocks down for a walkway. That is big business up and down through here. You'll see a lot of rock places with that's metal over there, but we'll pass by probably seven or eight different places that sell rocks. There's one right now on our left, a rock selling place. And there's just all kind of rock, I guess, just to pull out of the hillside here. Really nice, handsome looking building stone. there to the left that kind of dirt looking mess that you see there is actually part of a little quarry area where they go and they pull the rock out and sort it. And there's a bunch of those around here. Uh, there's one off to the right we'll just pass it maybe the field of view is wide enough and the GoPro you can see that. But all those rocks just come right out of the hillsides here. mountain ridge you see there in front of us uh, that is little switzerland up there on top uh, so that's actually where we're headed it doesn't look too high from here but we have to climb a long way to get up there probably well definitely over a thousand feet um, i think i've looked it up before what the difference between this this elevation here and i'll i'll try to put that as a subtitle on this video that's where we're headed it is like 809 in the morning on January 5th just so you know that's kind of what the light is like uh, this early in the morning in, in the winter
okay we're approaching the point here where we're getting ready to go up the mountain it's 226 is what this is called so i'm gonna get over in the left lane and we're going north on 226 we're going to turn left 221 we'll go north up into linville and avery county but we're going to go 226 uh, going north right here and pretty soon we'll start our ascension of the mountain um, locals around here call it Cox's Creek, I guess because the creek is probably called Cox's Creek here that uh, is, at, is at the foot of the mountain. But the, the people up in, in Little Switzerland and uh, Spruce Pine, they call it Cox's Creek Mountain. I don't think the creek runs down along the mountain, it is at the, at, actually at the foot of it. interested to see how this camera is doing uh, mounted to the windshield um, you know I shot other videos with holding the camera in my hand as I'm riding down the road which is not really safe I'm sure but uh, I, I wonder how much of the road shake I'm picking up I, I wonder if it's gonna be really smooth video or if it's gonna be a little shaky looking because the roads are not in the best shape here there's cracks in them and are bumpy I'm in a little Honda Civic, so if you're if you're driving a late model Honda Civic, I think this is a 2011 that I'm driving. Then uh, this is the kind of <laughs> of uh, smoothness you're going to get if you're driving up through here. Now we could stay straight here and go to Little Switzerland. It's very it's much longer and curvier. Uh, it's a good bit longer. So you could go 226A. I'm going to turn right here and go 226 North. Just regular 226 North. 226A will get you there, and it's very pretty. It'll get you there slower, and it's very curvy. You're getting ready to see how curvy the mountain is as we ascend. Um, and it's curvy enough going this way. This is the much faster way to get up to Spruce Pine and Little Switzerland, though. But if you if you got time, you got a car, and you really like to test the curves, might like going up the other way which is uh, straight instead of where we just turned right Cox's Creek free will Baptist Church so Cox's Creek is actually running off to our left over here um, Maybe you can make that out. You can see that there's, of course, houses over here to the left and back behind them is the creek. And straight up the mountain there, did you see that mountain uh, in the foreground? That is Little Switzerland. About this point right here is where I would kind of consider you starting your ascent. This is where things start to get a little steeper and you start to really climb. So I don't know if you can get a sense of that, but we're going up a, I don't know, 10, 12 percent grade as you climb on up through here. So you, you're going to gear down. I just went into my fourth gear. I'm driving in a five speed um, car. I'll have to hit third gear here in a minute for sure. You need to be careful, especially driving in the winter, and if there's been any moisture at all, it gets pretty slick up and down through here. 
and be respectful of the road. There have been a lot of people killed coming up and down through here too. Just, just get a little, maybe the road's wet or the road's icy, just a little bit and you can lose it and go into the rocks. And you can see you can smash yourself up pretty bad. Most of the people I think that have been killed have been coming down the mountain too fast. It, it, it seldom happens going up the mountain. Although there have been some, some accidents. But coming off the mountain is pretty hazardous in the winter sometimes because it gets really much colder up here than it does down the valley. The 1,000, 1,500 feet that you climb makes a huge difference as far as uh, weather goes. And they've actually really improved this road over the years. It's much wider than it used to be. It used to be two lanes. Now we've got three lanes uh, most of the way. And uh, it used to be if you got behind a slow moving truck up through here, you were just out of luck. But now you can go almost the entire way to the top uh, with two lanes on this right side. Kind of cool not to be, have anybody following me today. People seem to like to race up this mountain. I don't know what the mentality is, but you might be going 45 miles an hour up the mountain and somebody wants to go 60. I, I, I don't get it. Almost at the top now. These last few curves are just crazy. Going kind of southeast right now. Of course, the sun just coming up there. And when you get to the top, you got this junction 226A. And we're going to go, we could go left here. A lot of times we go left, and it says parkway detour. So I'm not sure if the parkway's closed or not. I might be able to look and see. I like to ride on the parkway. It looks like the parkway's open. So uh, I'm going to go uh, south on the parkway. Instead of going left, I could turn left right here, and I'll be at Little Switzerland in just a few miles. Well, actually, this is called considered Little Switzerland here. But I like to go uh, on the parkway. I think it's a little bit quicker. Believe it or not, probably a little less crooked, and it's a whole lot prettier. Now, of course, if you want to see down in the valley, then the 226 route is probably a better route could have gone left and you get a lot of really dramatic valley shots. I just particularly kind of like the parkway. A lot of people here a lot use the parkway just like a regular old road. I mean, parkway is kind of a special thing for a lot of people to come visit. Up here it's just another road for us. That is the North Carolina Mineral and Gym Museum uh, down to the right. We just passed it. I should have mentioned that. Pretty interesting little thing. A lot of minerals and gems and uh, interesting rocks and a lot of interesting geology and all up here and it uh, kind of highlights some of that uh, my dad used to be a rock hound and a rock hound is a person that collects rocks finds specimens studies them and he still has a lot of his rocks and stuff around a lot of gemstones up here um, gee he can tell me a lot about that maybe i'll interview him um, we're seeing a lot of mountain laurel the little green bushes you'll see 
we call them mountain laurel, I guess they're rhododendron. There's actually another plant that really is a mountain laurel. It's a smaller plant. But you can tell it's been really cold when the leaves curl up. They curl up almost like a cigar. Usually they're out and they're kind of a flat looking thing. Like a, sort of like what you'd see on a uh, magnolia. And, uh, but in the winter, if it gets below, I don't know, 30 degrees naturally, they just curl up in a real tight little uh, cylinder. Very interesting. A little dark on this side of the parkway. This part of the morning is kind of uh, you know on the north side of of the ridge here that we're riding. Mile marker 332 on the Blue Ridge Parkway, and we're getting ready to come up on what's called the Lynn Gap. L Y N N. The Big Glen Lodge is down here and it's over to the left. You can't really access it from where I am if you wanted to go get to the Big Glen Lodge, which is a nice little place to stay, good food and everything. Then it, you go all the way to Little Switzerland, the little village of Little Switzerland, turn around and come back on 226A. Or you could have turned left, uh, where I instead turned right and got on the parkway, you could have turned left and gone straight to it. There's not access off the parkway to the Big Glen Lodge. Here we are, Lynn Gap. It says elevation 3109, and that's the Big Land Lodge over on the left. It's named after a big Lynn tree, uh, a L Y N N tree, a Lynn tree. Uh, and I can remember when the stump of it when I was a little boy, it was, must have been a huge tree, at least six or seven feet in diameter. And so it's named after a big tree. Now, Spruce Pine is back off down to our right, down, you know. I should have said that, where I turned right where the parkway was, that's also where you would turn to go to Spruce Pine. If I would not turned onto the parkway and just gone straight, that would have taken me to Spruce Pine. And we're now getting ready to come up on the, uh, the uh, Little Switzerland Tunnel. It's up here just in a minute. There it is. Pretty cool little hole here you go through to get to over to get to the true little, little town of Little Switzerland. Turn my lights off. Now look at the look at the ice here. It's pretty cool. I'll just pause and let us see the ice. Always a lot of icicles in the winter because a lot of water comes off the rocks here. Here's, your two, here's where 226A comes back into the picture. And we're going to get off on that just in a second here. And here's your little Switzerland exit. Now the Big Lynn Law, or Big Lynn Law, the uh, Chalet Motor Lodge it used to be called, I'm not sure what they call it now, Switzerland Inn now. We used to call it the Chalet. It is this uh, place over here. It's pretty nice. Um, good food there, good restaurant, and it's it's closed in the winter, or at least it used to be. I'm assuming it still is. But it, I believe it closes at, maybe at the end of October. But great place to come vacation in, in the uh, spring and summer, and on into the, uh, the fall, of course. So here you get a sense of what it's like. 226A, we just come back into it. And that's the little Switzerland post office, the Switzerland cafe. You have bookshops over here. Little gift areas and all that. <clears throat> Arts and crafts. <clears throat> and I'm going this way um, around the side of the mountain. This is called the Bearwalla Gap Road. Bearwalla. I guess a bear wallowed up here at some point, or bears used to walla. And there are black bears up here in the area. Um, I've not seen one. Uh, although I know my brothers and my, my mom and dad, all I've ever seen up here much is are deer and turkey and uh, you know possums and raccoons and 
foxes, things like that, but there are bears up here. They seem to be making a big comeback. The populations are rising. Now this is a precarious little road and I've probably posted some video of this before, but maybe not in winter like this where you can see it really well. Surely not with a GoPro. If I had a GoPro pointing to the left, you'd be able to see how far that goes down into the valley. It's like you look like you fall six, 700 feet if you go off the side of the mountain here. They put guardrails up. There used to not be any guardrails here. So now all this guardrail work is, is pretty, pretty nice. It'd be, you'd be hard to go off the mountain here now, I think, unless you're just driving like an absolute idiot. Now, it's going to be an underpass here in a minute uh, with the parkway going over the top. And this is actually what's called the Bear Walla Gap right here. And I think we're pretty much in McDowell County at this point, but we're getting ready to enter into Mitchell County. And here we are. This is the underpass of Bear Walla Gap. The old girls camp road is to the left there. That's where, that's where that old dirt road there we just passed. And I've got, I posted a video of what it's like to get from the parkway, the Blue Ridge Parkway, and drive the girls camp road over here to this point. The little area we're headed toward now is sort of the Strawberry Ridge uh, section of, of Little Switzerland. We're not quite there yet. This is called a you know, Crabtree Creek runs in here. I guess it's a Crabtree Creek Road. That's what you would call this. Again, the Black Mountains there in the foreground, you can see how much closer we are. We're, we're pretty close to the Black Well, we're, I say we're close, we're still probably, gee, 25 miles away if you're gonna get on the on the parkway or, or other roads to access them or get to them. As a crow flies, maybe 15 miles away. little Black Mountain Baptist Church is going to be down here on the right and uh, that's where I went to church when I was young it's not really Black Mountain in Black Mountain it's in Little Switzerland but the Black Mountains are behind it there so that's kind of why they called it that I'm sure Ready to turn left here on Deer Lick Gap Road down to see my mom and dad. They're down at the end of this little road. That's my uncle Dan's house. Thank you. 
start recording.